Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is going to be a Dark Souls special, um, I call it a special, it's not really a special, this is going to be a how to of how to get through the depths and kill the boss in one video, hopefully, uh, in the quickest and safest way possible, because quite a few people have struggled with the depths and primarily because of the cursed lizards which nobody seems to like, they are quite terrifying. Yeah, I did just start making this video literally just a second ago and some genius thought it would be a great idea to invade me and uh, needless to say considering I'm speedrunning this to get through it back to uh, bosses that I need to he beat my ass well she beat my ass yeah, but um so yeah uh, this is going to be like so from the room I was in down to the boss room in the safest and quickest manner possible you don't need to kill these rats but I thought I'd show you if you don't have the key for that room it's here that's the sewer chamber key that lets you go into that, bo uh, that bonfire room there nice and safe First things first, before you do anything else, you're going to want to go and come round here, pick up this useless item, because you might as well, and kill someone over here. Because this makes the boss fight very, very difficult if you don't kill him. Yeah, depending on where I am depends on how bad my lag is, and uh, apparently this place is pretty damn bad, so uh, you may have to bear with me a little bit. These rats are huge, and they do, obviously they have more health and they do a bit more damage. This guy is going to need to kill. I'm hoping he's not going to get too pissy and... two rats down. This guy really needs to come down here, or come up here as it were. You're making my video unnecessarily long, buddy. That was as laggy as fuck. Ah, oh, I killed it too. So yeah, all you want to do is kill him, then you're going to go back, because a lot of people, they keep going, and that's where your problem starts, because that's where all the cursed lizards, lizards start ending up. doesn't matter if you don't have very much health, you don't need a lot of health for this. But it is, in a, it is worthwhile as long as you have the, uh, the Ring of Favor of Protection. I will show you my stats before I get to the boss room. I'm going to drop down here. So you fall down here, it takes a little bit of health. There's one Cursed Lizard, which obviously you're going to want to be very, very careful for, because these guys are fucking terrifying. Look at these creepy bastards. So yeah, you're going to want to kill him post-haste. Like I said, that's the only one you're going to have to kill. That's it. So you kill one Cursed Lizard and you're safe. There's a load of rats, but rats aren't really that scary, come on, are they? Nothing like a fucking terrifying giant lizard thing with boggly eyes that'll curse you and permanently make you lose half your health. Oh, there's a lot of rats. There's a lot, a lot of rats. So as you can see, I've got decent stats. I'm actually, at this point in time, uh, from the Moonlight Butterfly video, this isn't very far from there. Right, if you're running through here in human form, you will get an NPC invade called something or other, basically, yeah. It's uh, some guy with thorn armor and shit. He's pretty crap, though, so you should be able to kill him with relative ease. Right, so we end up here, which I will show you. If you run up here, so from that's where we came from, you run up this way. Got <sighs> hair on me randomly. Run through all the lag that you won't have that I do. There's a door, which, this door is only openable from this side, don't worry about the rat, he shouldn't be able to hit you. Whilst the he hits me and kills me in one now. Uh, and that's the shortcut to get back to this bonfire. So you can see that's there. So, that's that done. Right, now let's go kill the boss. Which, if you sprint down these stairs, that slime is probably going to be in my way, I can imagine. Nope, he's not. Sometimes that slime, if you're too slow, that slime range is to get in the way and you have to kill him. They're very easy to kill, but they take a long time. So, yeah, you're there. You run along. This should be looking familiar to you now, if you do know this area at all. Uh, I'm not going to bother summoning a uh, old man Solaire. I don't really need him. Uh, this is one of the bosses on this you don't need a shield for. There's no point having a shield for this boss, so... um. I'm actually going to put this on and remove. Actually, no, I might as well keep the shield, to be fair. No, not wooden shield, grass crest shield. There we go. No, nope, then I'm going to have to remove the... Ah, never mind, hey. Right, so stats, very quick, just to show you my stats. I'm level 23, not very far in. Uh, I'm running mainly decks because I want to have glass cannon. At this point in the game, if this is your first ever run through, I would be advising leveling vitality, endurance either strength or dexterity or both depending on what weapon you're using if you're using like a, a Uji Katana like I am you want to mainly level dex and that's about it it's all you really need 
because um, then you can have a lot of health and you can just survive through most incidents. So yeah, this is the gaping dragon boss fight. I'll skip the cutscene if you want to watch it, watch it when you're playing it. Right, the first thing you should hope he does is this, because this is when you're going to be attacking. So he'll slam his head on the floor, run, stand slightly in front of him, get a cheap hit in. Usually one or two, don't get more than that, don't get greedy, because then he starts running. If his legs hit you, he'll knock you over and do a lot of damage. So I'm just going to stand here on two hand. Uh, word of advice, if you attack the tail, you can chop it off and get the Dragon King Grax, which I'll try and do this video. Uh, his head's come back up, so now I'm going to get away. This is his jump. He can jump across the room as well. If he lands on you, that's going to do a lot of damage. So uh, you want to avoid that. Here he goes again. So standing in front of him again. Like I said, getting a cheeky hit or two. Depending on how confident you're feeling. Don't get more than that though. Then again, wait until he starts running. He'll run and run and run until he either hits a wall or whatever. Then get a couple sneaky hits on his tail if you can. There we go, Dragon King Grax. Taking that tail off makes him a lot easier to kill because then he can't like throw it at you. There's the head slam again. As you can see, he's got a lot of health, but he's not really got that much in the way of damage unless you're really stupid and stand in front of him. There's some leather armor over there. It's quite good, actually. Uh, especially if it's your first playthrough and you're playing tanky build. Alright, so yeah, we're going to stand here and cut away at his backside. I'm going to go for an R2 just for some flashiness. As you can see, I'm really not doing much damage to him, so this is going to take a while, but as long as you follow this attack pattern, you should be safe and there's not much you can do to hurt you. If he starts chasing, just run. Keep as far away from him as possible, don't stand near him. If you stand near him, you're dead. Oh, that's his grab attack. If he grabs you with that, he will pick you up and eat you and you will die. There's the head slam again, that's always good. Be aware, sometimes this boss has a tendency to lag out a little bit and it'll randomly like head slam a, di a direction that he wasn't facing. So he'll be facing like that way and the head will land facing that way. So I need to get back in and start chopping up this guy's legs. If you have magic, feel free to do so. The best time to use magic is... Oh, I thought I was stuck then. There's the jump again. The best time to do magic is when he's got the head slammed down so he'll run to the right. I'll show you next time he does it. Right, this is his puke attack, which is quite grotesque. You want to run as far away as possible. This doesn't do damage so much, but it does damage your equipment. And especially if you're using a weapon like the Shikatana with weak uh, resistance, it can break it very, very fast. So yeah, the best time to use your magic would be around now-ish. When you get over here, you stand safely and you can get a couple hits on him with magic. If you don't have any magic, it's fine. Just follow what I'm doing. I, like, I've got no magic myself, and I'm still managing to keep some damage going on him. Uh... As you can see, I'm not bothering to lock on because I prefer to be able to have uh, access to my camera so I can see where he's going when he jumps. Because if, Whoa, there's the tail slash. If that you don't chop the tail off, that'll hit you and it's got a lot of range. That's why it's advisable to take the tail off. As you can see, I'm just keeping my camera on him, keeping him in view. Uh, there's the jump across the room. He's going to land on me. No, he's not. But as you can see, he can go quite a distance. There's the grab again. Like I said, if that grabs you, you're dead. So make sure you avoid that. There's the tail again. He's only got like four or five attacks. And none of them are so difficult that you won't be able to dodge them. This is his last one he has, which is a couple of stamps. If you stand near him, it'll stagger you. There's the tail again. Be aware, that can still hit you. Don't think you're immune to him slapping in the face of the tail because it's just because he doesn't have one. He will stump you in the face. I just realized I'm going right next to him, which is the stupidest thing I could possibly have done. As you can see, I'm just keeping my distance from him, waiting for the right time to strike, so to speak. There's the stomp again. I managed to roll away from it, which is no problem. I would expect... He's really not slamming his head down. If you're worried about this boss in any way, shape or form, if you're struggling with him in the slightest, then just literally, all you want to do is you want to wait for him to do that. Don't attack unless he does that. So yeah, get a couple hits in. He'll do his run. Sometimes, however, he will not run. He'll just stand there and then lift his head back up again. So be careful for that fact. Because if he does that, he'll then do another attack and you can get caught off guard. So this has been how to complete the depths and how to complete how to beat the uh, gaping dragon boss fight. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope this has been enlightening for you. Next thing we're going to be going to do is going down into the depths of Blighttown and we'll be taking on Quailag. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.